Hi, Bobby here. I'm a software sales engineer at Visual Planning, the simple resource management and software solution. Today, I want to show you a quick demo of what our product can do for people working in the construction industry. All right, here's our goal for today. In this video, I will show you how using Visual Planning can optimize your company's productivity. Whether you are a foreman or a project manager, a quality collaborative resource management and scheduling software is essential for any productive business. In this demo, you will learn how to apply the following points into your workflow. One, scheduling of employees, skills, and vehicles to construction sites. Two, employee, vehicle, and site workloads. Three, time off scheduling for employees and vehicles. Four, site management, including date calculation and Gantt charts. And five, plan versus actual reporting. Before I start, I want to mention that visual planning is fully customizable, so layouts, colors, icons, and more can be added or specifically tailored for your business. The planner that we are about to dive into is all about construction management. Up here is a custom dashboard with many custom widgets. We have some weather widgets here. So if you do business in many types of cities or many locations, it could be useful for you to have those up. On the right hand side here, we have some favorite displays, which I will navigate in a moment. In the middle here, we have a site event list, staff listing, and staff absences, which as you see, if I hover my mouse over, they will scroll down. On the bottom here, we have construction site analysis in a line chart. We have vehicle listing, similar to staff listing, and the histogram example for reports. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. We can have many different types of reporting or, or many other different types of lists for you here. Let me click on our first display, project management. As you can see, we have a construction site schedule with a list of staff and vehicles on the right-hand side. I will open our resource profiles and schedule a couple of events. If I double click on a site, here are a few fields that we can provide. Keep in mind, everything you see is customizable. A popular tool in this configuration is our geolocation application. This feature displays a map view of a specific site or location. And if I click on this icon, it'll bring it up on a map. Let me close it for now. If I click on the events tab here, a list of all events for the site are shown, including staff, vehicles, and duration of events. On the right-hand side, we have a list of, st list of staff members grouped by position. If I double click on a staff member, a resource view populates with staff information, such as phone, email, and skills. The skills highlighted in gray are the services this employee is specialized. To add a skill, hold the control key and click on a skill highlighted in white, like this. So wallboard is the only skill that Kirk cannot do currently. So if I want to add that, just hold control, click on it, and now he, uh, he can do wallboarding. Click on OK. For vehicles, if I double-click on a vehicle icon, a resource view will populate with that vehicle's corresponding data. In this case, we have the vehicle registration number and a list of scheduled events. In addition, we can also create fields such as VIN number or license plate number to better track your specified data. Now, I will show you how to assign a staff member and vehicles to a project. If I click and drag an employee onto a project, like so, Let's say we're going to do Paul. Click, drag, let go. And I window will pop up. So here we'll specify how many days you want the project to be. Let's make it only two for now. We can pick a status. Let's say it'll be in progress and then a description. Let's say double check on site. We can also add a vehicle, but for now, let's not. Click on OK. And you will see now that Paul's on the schedule for those two days. OK, so that's one way we can do it. We can also do it another way by clicking on the Vehicles tab. And let's pick a vehicle here. Let's say Wheel Loader for now. Click, drag, and let's say we're going to assign it to Social Center. Here, a window pops up that is showing you only vehicle, I'm sorry, only staff members that are available to work according to workload, as you'll see up here. If I click this off, it'll be your full list. So this is describing um, only the staff members that are available to work during those two days. Now we can go even further, where if we click on the filter tab here, let's say we just only want to see people that have the skills for roofing, brick, and wallboard. We can click on this and it'll filter out even more. So now only these four people can now work for the duration of this task that have those skills. Let's say we're gonna assign Sean, double click on Sean. Again, let's make this two days. We'll leave the status and description for now. Let's click on OK. And you'll see now that Sean and the wheel loader are now on the schedule for the social center. 
Again, this is a great way to make sure that you're not overutilizing or underutilizing any of your resources. Now, let me double book an employee. So let's say we're going to schedule um, Sean again uh, for another day. Let's just press OK for now. And you see here, this resource is already occupied. Would you like to continue? Because we just scheduled him down here. If you press no, it'll come off the schedule. So again, these warnings are a great way to make sure that you're not double booking any of your resources and making sure everything is on track. One other thing I wanted to show you is some filtering. So if I right click on the schedule here, go to events or filters here, we can filter by certain things. So here, let's say you just wanted to be able to see, you know, just the people that had, again, those skills again, you can click on that and the other events will disappear. Same thing for events. So if I go back here, let's bring them back. And let's say we wanted to, you know, just see ongoing works. Again, some other events disappear depending on the status. And there you go. One other thing I wanted to mention is that we have site information sheet tab here that just shows you a breakdown of the site, number of days sold, which client is for, and some date information, and then also the difference between the real delivery date and the estimated delivery date. And again, we can color code uh, some information here, as you see right here. On the top right corner is our display navigator. Here we have a list of six displays in this planner, and I'll select the second display view titled Employee Management. In this view, you can monitor staff schedules, assign projects, along with days off scheduling. Absences can be scheduled by simply clicking and dragging them onto the schedule, like so. So you want to schedule a PTO for somebody, let's say Sean for this day. Click drag, let's say it's only going to be one day, and we can put in the description, uh, say wedding. Click on OK, and you'll see that the PTO is now on the schedule. We can also extend it out a day by clicking the edge, taking it, and dragging it out, or going back into the event input editor like you just saw before. Okay. We can also um, change the scroll and the scale of the schedule. If I right click here, go to header, and then here's the scale and the scroll. So here the scroll is by month. So as I click through, it'll change the month. But we can also do it freely where it would just go by day. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, down here we have some workloads. So what that means is that if it's one, if it's 100%, it means that employee is working 100% of the time for that day. If it's 0%, it means that the employee is available, that they're, they're not working or they're, they don't have time off. And up here is the total number of uh, the workforce that is scheduled for that particular day. So here on Tuesday the 15th, you'll see that 63% of the entire workforce has been scheduled. Okay, moving on. Display three is called vehicles management. Here, we have a vehicle schedule in a uh, display in weeks. Uh, we also have uh, the type here and the registration number on, on the left-hand side. And down here, we have a workload. So what this means is how many vehicles have been scheduled for that particular day. So you'll see here that the six are highlighted in blue. Anything underneath that is highlighted in yellow. So what we can do is we can color code, uh, depending on what percentage to your capacity you're at, we can color code depending on what it is. You also see here that the target is 11 because there are 11 vehicles. And it also has percentages as well. Again, this is a great way to make sure that your vehicles are being utilized properly. One other thing that we have here is that we can schedule not available activities such as maintenance or technical malfunction by just simply clicking, dragging it onto the schedule. And then we can extend it out to say it's going to be three days or say it's gonna be down for the whole week, we could do it like that. And you'll see down here that the workload does change as well. One other thing about filtering is that if I click here, go to vehicles, we have some custom filters. So if I click on cranes, you see that you only see the cranes and the same thing with excavators, you only show the excavators. So we can create many multiple custom filters for you to make sure that you, know, you can quickly navigate through your data and see exactly what you wanna see when you wanna see it. Okay, moving on. Let's go to our fourth view called rosters and loads. Here we have the staff schedule up top and the project schedule on the bottom. Scrolling is synchronized between the two schedules. So as I scroll to the left, you'll see that the one that they both uh, scroll uh, in sync with one another. The number under site on the project schedule is equal to days sold or duration of the project. And the histogram workload down here, total load size capacity employees, are how many employees are scheduled for that one particular day. 
in histogram format. So here you'll see on the ninth that the value is 10 and the target is 11 because there are 11 employees. And you'll see here that the colors change depending on how many uh, employees are scheduled. So again, this is another great way to make sure that um, you can see everything on one screen. And again, to make sure that your, your um, resources are being utilized correctly. Moving on, let's go to our fifth view called Gantt Charts. As I click through the projects up top here, as I click through the projects up top here, you'll see that the events change depending on the projects because we have a selection filter enabled. So you'll see as I click on Delaney Inc., City of Westminster, City of Coventry, and back to Aquatic Center that they all change. And again, we can scroll over and see more events that are happening, okay? And you'll also be able to see here that we have uh, um, employee, start date, end date, and duration on the left-hand side of the screen, but that information can also be, can always be customized. Moving on, our last view called history and reports. So here we have, we have a project list and task history associated with a particular project. So as I click through the projects, you'll see that the events change along with the information. On the bottom here, we have a report called analysis of sites, which shows plan versus actual, um, plan, I'm sorry, plan versus actual hours for every single site and with employee information here as well, okay? So as we scroll across, it's broken down by month, and you could see if there are any discrepancies, and you could see you know, if there are some employees that aren't getting the jobs on their time. Under the locations graphical tab, just a line chart broken down by month of plan versus actual hours. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Visual planning can create any report in real time to help you run your business more efficiently. I hope you have a better understanding of how visual planning works. For more information, or if you'd like to sign up for a demo, go to visual-planning.com. Lastly, make sure to follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter for all resource management and scheduling related content. Have a good one.